Hello, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> nice to have you all here. So we are starting right now. Closing a couple of windows here. So we are live. Welcome back to the stream. Friday. Friday evening. A surprise stream. So something unusual. And also tomorrow. Also tomorrow. So I've got a couple of time uh, for the next days. I really want to get this printer done. <laughs> So, I uh, want to welcome everyone. Like, who's here? Let me let me see who's here. Um, chat is uh, lagging a bit. So, Alexander, Porphyrius, Xylion, welcome. A couple of people already joining. Maker Viking jumped over from YouTube. Yeah, thank you for, for coming to Twitch, supporting me on Twitch. Makes makes me happy if people also watch the streams on Twitch because you can always watch the live stream a replay on YouTube if you want and I'm trying to um, increase the audience on, on Twitch a little bit also for the tools that we're using because we're really focusing on getting things up uh, and running on Twitch for uh, the foreseeable future for any kind of interactivity that uh, we might add and on YouTube that's Surprisingly and unfortunately a much harder topic, so they are not not that so much there. A couple of things are still missing on YouTube for integration wise. And I think that's yeah, that's why we're here on uh, Twitch. What are we also streaming on YouTube? That's great. Let me show you um, what we are supposed to do tonight. Um, because there is a couple of things that I want to do. So tech check was great, it was working. Okay, so um, one thing that I had to do, which I did not, um, which I realized this morning, uh, when I looked at the printhead one more time, I was realizing it wasn't completely vertical and it was kind of tilted on on that mount and so I disassembled it or took it off again and then realized we didn't cut the belts last time we didn't cut them flush to the mount basically and I was I had the impression that it was okay but the belts were protruding out and also uh, when looking closer I realized that the belts that were like sticking out of that uh, mount were like also covering the um, the hot end a little bit also the heating fins so to say and that means probably the airflow and the cooling would be influenced negatively by that so that combined with the fact that the hot end um, or the whole assembly was kind of pushing against it and then not perfectly perpendicular because it was li slightly tilted and the belts were blocking it from really going flush on the surface of that mount um, made me cut the belts completely flush so now this whole thing is perfectly vertical it's it's sitting flush and it's not moving i mean it wasn't also not it was also not moving before but now it's you can also see from the sides that there is no gaps anymore so there was a little gap and that that caused it to tilt um, so the, the plan for tonight is that we are going to install the Picobilical tool head PCB and frame PCB. And what that means is um, on other printers that you might know, the cables are just as long as they need to be to run from the whole hot end um, from the tool head back to the main board and then they are normally all connected there. The Picobilical uh, PCB is an intermediate PCB that where first of all all of the plugs from for example the motor and anything else like the, the sensor and the hot end heater everything gets connected to this little PCB board first and then there's a huge cable that has all of the pins 
that are required to drive all of these individual uh, items are going out in one huge string, basically like going out back to the to put to the main board. And that makes it easier to disconnect individual things. So you don't have to always get to the main board and disconnect something there. Um, also has the advantage that you can have um, the main cable that connects to the PCB. It can be wrapped in a shrink tube and you don't have to take out individual cables or unwrap something, um, makes it so much easier from that perspective. And the mounting position for that is behind the motor. So there is two holes here that fit the motor um, screw distance perfectly. And there is another little distance holder or a list distancing piece here that I printed yesterday um, because I did forget about that completely, which is going to hold this part and it's going to be mounted to the back like this. And I also have some two little plastic spacers, which I don't yet know where they are exactly to be placed, but we'll see that in a moment when we start attaching this. Then the other side of the story, basically this is what is attached on the tool head. There is a PCB board on the receiving side, as usual. That's this uh, friend here. That's a, also a power distribution board. And on the back side, you have the same connector one more time. That goes to the hot end or the tool head. And here on this side, we can then again connect everything that we need uh, to connect back to the main board. So that's again an intermediate step. Um, makes things a little bit more complicated, of course. But on the other hand, um, the, the wiring is, is cleaner and you have additional fuse here. And I think these are just some additional buttons to control stuff. So there's a couple of more connectivity options on this board and it's also distributing power. You can also deliver power to additional uh, sensors. And I think we can, have, yeah, it's quite useful if you really wanna extend your printer at some point, this becomes quite useful. Now, we are also missing one piece and that is a plate that is uh, holding this um, somewhere here at the back of the frame. So there is going to be a plastic cover. So the plastic cover uh, I still print, or I'm still printing. That plastic cover is going to protect this PCB from accidentally touching the frame or something touching it and some uh yeah it's basically just some protection again um these are the things i think it's gonna be quite a like don't underestimate the time that it will take because my estimation is that this is gonna take the evening to do all of that uh, although it looks quite obvious straightforward but if we want to get it right and we don't want to make any mistakes connecting stuff, we need to take our time. The other uh, thing is that on the uh, main board, I still have to figure out for a couple of the cables that we have coming from the hot uh, heater here and some LEDs that we have on the, um, on the heated bed. Uh, we need to figure out the pin assignments and we need to uh, connect them to the correct pins on the main board and uh, so we also have if we have time left that is a task that is still to do um, then another task that we have to um, do tonight probably is to figure out what kind of um, controller board we want to use um, for running clipper so on the basically the where's my uh, Pico here. So there is um, the SKR Pico that's going to be the um, drivers basically for our motors and stuff. But that's only half of the electronics, so to say. That's only the drivers. But we also need um, either a Raspberry Pi or a Big Tree Tech Pi. Different things um, are here for as an option. I have 
big uh, Raspberry Pi 3, 4 and 5 and also the big tree tech Pi 1.2. So we can like basically make that decision. My best guess is that since the recommendation for the Voron Zero is we could theoretically just use a Pi W or 2W more precisely, a 2W uh, which is effectively a Raspberry Pi 3B plus um, with less ports. So if that is already enough to drive this printer, um, W2, yeah, 2W, W2. So this is the, the newer version of the, of the uh, Raspberry Pi um, W, but that is supposed to be enough to run this printer. The downside of this board is, however, it has, I mean, it has a few ports, but it doesn't have so many. It, for example, it's only one usable USB port because the second one is for power delivery only. That's, uh, that's not to be confused with two USB ports here. It has an HDMI, HDMI port, but if we would want to connect some external camera and maybe an HDMI screen or some uh, same thing, and we need more USB ports, or we want to connect any external device that requires USB, for example, we would need um, some USB hub connected to this. Um, we can run a camera from this. There is a camera connection port here, but there's, for example, no screen connector. So on the Raspberry Pi 3, B+, and 4, and 5, there is an SPI connector for screens. Now, you probably have heard me talking about something like the Big Tree Tech um, SPI screens, or the TFT35 SPI which I had on my V100, I had a lot of problems with the screen because it was always sending some ghost touching and that was causing all kinds of problems. And I have not figured out if it's just a faulty screen or it's really something in the software or in the cable. So that was not yet uh, figured out. Um, but that's also a pretty huge screen. For the screen, we're gonna use uh, this small one here, this is a special V0, v v zero Warren screen with a, with a little turning knob. That's connected, but that also requires a USB port, right? So we're using a USB port to connect that. And then we have maybe other things that we want to connect over USB. And so uh, probably that will be the reason why I, mm, I'm more tending to use um, a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Uh, and maybe nothing more powerful because it's also not required because we want to drive one printer from it and um, it is also not a huge printer so it's it will be moving fast but it's also something uh, it's a rather limited uh, it's rather limited in its specifics so that's why I think the 3B plus is probably just good enough and the cheapest solution the alternative would be the the big tree tech Pi 1.2 that would probably work fine as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm currently thinking that the 3B plus is something that makes sense. For that, we need to print a couple of more things. We need to print the right mounts and figure out which ones we need. We also print mounts for the SKR Pico mainboard and stuff like that. So we have lots of stuff to do still. And tomorrow I also wanna continue uh, making more progress. So I will head over to the workshop in a second and I will do, uh, I will just double check what is going on with the printout for this uh, PCB cover. Let's see. Because I figured that my SKR, um, the K1C, Somewhat had an issue here tonight reporting some kind of temperature issues. I don't know why. But I hope that we're gonna be successful printing this part. So I'm gonna open the chat here. So if I'm over in the in the workshop, I can also see the chat if you have any questions what's going on let me know if you can hear me because last time we had some connectivity issues with the microphone over here 
I hope it's working. Yeah, it's cold here. The heater has some issues. I mean, I think it's actually... Um, or it's clipper, something with clipper or a cable connection issue because the sensor seems to be fine. And then in the end, totally random, it reports, it re like drops that the temperature is dropping for some reason. And then the next time you just turn off the printer and turn it back on, it's coming, it's working normally. So, and it, I mean, it could be something physical with the sensor or the heater because it's, it only happens when, you are, when I'm printing ABS. Okay, so yeah, maybe the connection is like the distance to the receiver is a little bit longer when I have to go the, all the way around to this, this room here. But then when I'm here, I uh, hope it's working. It's also interesting enough, when I'm at the printers, when I'm going in this direction, I'm actually closer to the receiver and, but there is probably some interference. And that's why it's probably also not working that well if I'm in the back. But let's see. Um, I just have to restart the print and I will be back to the studio. Yeah, interesting enough, the problem with the temperature uh, error message is only happening with ABS. And ABS, I'm printing this at 260 degrees and it seems like it's heating up, it's going to the, the suspected or the required temperature. And then somehow it has a little drop and that is already enough to make it freak out. And next time you just do the same thing, just turn the printer off, turn it back on and it just works. Right, and so that was the pattern for, actually it was fine for the last couple of weeks now and I had this problem in the beginning. I was greasing the connector, so I was disconnecting everything and then was greasing those connectors with uh, connection grease and then and it was fine and now it seems to be back. Yeah, we can also use, um, I mean, maybe I need a more powerful microphone sender or something, I don't know. Good, printer is starting, let's see if it works. I'm gonna monitor it from the studio. So, actually it's cool now that we have a camera in the studio and in the workshop so I can like basically have some things going on over there, we can, uh, we're kind of connected still, we can still watch what's going on. Still, uh, I mean, the, this one printer is just underneath the camera on, this, on, the, on another table that I'm normally not using for printers but it's the K1C that I've have to review still. I am collecting data basically about what I want to talk about. And in the meanwhile, Creality has sent the V3. I mean, it's it's crazy. They're like they are pushing out so many products now that I'm hard. It's really hard to keep up. Um, that's why we, we need to do more giveaways. <laughs> this is too much for me. It's it's seriously it's too much. It's getting too much. Um, okay, so printer should be starting, you know, hopefully. Let's, let's have a look, is it working? Let's have a look at the temperature curve. So that's, uh, that's the K1C. The heat up curve is a little weird. I mean, I did a pit tuning. I did a pit tuning. Um, the heat up that you see here, this weird curve is for this, like that's when the printer is doing its nozzle cleaning. Um, I do, still don't understand why it is that much fluctuating. Mm. And if we get that same error, we want to get it very soon after the nozzle cleaning when the printer starts heating up again. So it's like heating up for the cleaning, cooling down, heating up, 
and then at some point it's it's uh, having an issue so let's see if it works maybe yeah maybe we need to like maybe the pitch tuning is it could be making things worse or we had, or maybe I shouldn't do it at 260 I think I did the pitch tuning at 260 degrees so I did it at the highest printing temperature that I'm currently using maybe I should just do it at I don't know 220 230 for PLA maybe that is just too high and it's yeah it's not the average uh, thing to do I'm not sure if you should pit tune for the target temperature if it's high or if you just should do the pit tuning for something lower um, I haven't yet researched for that well ABS is good on that printer ABS is actually good um, I've printed all of the parts for the Voron on the K1C that was already a lot of stuff and it the results are pretty pretty nice so like you've seen that accurate prints nothing warping um, just these occasional temperature issues that I saw and no it's not that's not that's it's not PLA I'm printing uh, printing all of the parts in, in ABS so everything on the Voron printer is um, ABS um, there is you can you can print uh, some of the things on the Voron in PLA if you want to however my concern with that was I wouldn't find a, a color matching for the ABS part so I would I would have to like if I wanted to print these parts that are optionally printed in in some other material in non non ABS I would have to find a PLA material that has the very same color um, because I wanted to keep a consistent color scheme right so it, I wanted to have the red and the bronze and then I said forget about it I'm going to print everything on this printer in ABS because it's just looking better and it's going to be consistent so now the moment of truth is coming and now the temperature curve is why is there no temperature curve anymore It's heating up you see but the temperature curve is gone for some reason now oh, it's gone it's back now okay maybe that was the hiccup in the software but it could also be a clipper problem um, I mean this could also be my own fault because I have installed mainsail on the K1C which is non-standard right so it's not that's not on the printer by default you you normally if you just have the standard software on the printer you will have only this this thing here which is the original Creality menu which looks similar but it's not the same and it has less features so for example I, you cannot just go into the config files and with main sail installed on the K1C you can do a lot more things um, but that can also cause issues I mean it's two things running the, the main board is probably not that super powerful but let's wait let's wait it's the last print stopped around the first layer so temperature curve for now looks fine it looks pretty uh, flat but if we see some some severe dropping in the temperature that the problem is maybe back and I have no idea if it's a physical cable problem sensor problem or a heater problem um, anything is possible and if to really figure out the truth I would have to completely reset the printer to the factory defaults and uninstall clipper uh, or the main sale basically not clipper but clipper is, on, clipper is on it by default but the main sale and other add-ons that are installed and so to really make it a factory default and really figure out is this the cause or is it something really on the electronic side for now it looks good Yeah, we're gonna come back to that and we'll head over to the Voron manual uh, and we're gonna look at the printer in a second. So we have been stopping somewhere 
here after we did mount the tool head oh we had yeah this is probably the space the place where we stopped we mounted this to um a slider and now this part is different because of the picobilical uh, PCB board. That's the section that we need to look at now. And I printed this part, which is the tool head mount or the backside of the motor, uh, which is uh, where we have the PCB. The frame mount, this cover plate is currently printed, hopefully will be printed. Yeah, so far it's looking good. And now, Ah, da, 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 da. We are doing the manual until the printhead section and where you mounted strain relief and spacers. And we are installing, we installed the metal standoffs, which are different. They, normally you can use uh, printed standoffs with little heat set inserts. And we have metal standoffs, which are more stable. And then we are attaching this mount basically just how do we do that can we use screws attach the mount with two m3 by eight okay well, let's find them and we are first so i think it's temporarily mounting that because we will have to do the the same screws through probably a little bit longer screws uh, that will go through the pcb uh the hole, uh, the hole on top of the strain relief is a for heat set insert. However, it's not currently used for anything. So maybe we could attach an ADXL three four five sensor. I'm I'm curious if we should maybe do the heat set insert anyways. I mean, if they say it's not used for anything at the moment, but could be useful. This is actually a mounting. Maybe it's an it's a mounting point for stuff, or some kind of cable strain relief or cable guide. Um, so maybe we just maybe we just uh, do the heat set insert anyways. It's not so it's not so much additional weight. Okay, G forces. Hey. Saying hi on my quick lunch break, quite, a, quite the build, this little printer, yeah, it's, I suspect if we wouldn't, let's say we, we discount all of the talking and all of the video work around it that I've done here, it's still probably 40 hours of building, maybe a little bit less, because a Warren 2 is also around about 40 hours, but the complexity is very comparable, so it's, just bigger, but it's also, this one is said to be, actually it's said that the V0 is actually more complex to build. Maybe, let's see, I don't know. Plus 40 hours printing. The printing time, I, I, didn't, I didn't count that in. It's just really 40 hours of work. Plus maybe the, yeah, additional time that I, I need to do talking with you and oh, let's see we did find the wrong screws so I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to quickly um, we're gonna do two heat sets or one one heat set with our new brand new lately installed heat set close-up camera the the butt camera as we call it <laughs> the butt camera yeah so yeah it's more finicky it's definitely because it's all everything is smaller and you have to be yeah if you need small fingers to reach all of the parts and once everything is assembled, all of the panels are on, it's, it's probably very hard to reach stuff. That's why I think it's more complex. The number of parts is probably still very comparable to uh, a V2, the bigger brother. So 
So, I think the heat set could be useful at some, maybe it could be useful to mount an ADXL sensor, so an acceleration sensor or something else at some future point of time, but if you want to do this later, it's, it's more complex. Like, probably we can't reach it that, more, that easy, at, or we would touch something else with the soldering iron, so it's better probably just to do it. Good. Um, so we are mounting this to the back. Let's go. How's everyone doing? Uh, I need, by the way, I need to find a new music source. Uh, that's why we don't hear music at the moment. Because I get, I got, recently I got all kinds of copyright claims with stream beats. It was, it used to be, why is it not? The screws are too short. Uh, is it the right orientation? Is this too short? M3 by 8? It's too short if you uh, attach the mount, the hole on top of the screen is relief. Okay, uh, my impression is that M3 by 8 screws are too short for this purpose. So they're not grabbing. You probably need a little bit longer. M3 by 10. Why that is in the manual is, don't get it, honestly. Why is this, uh, why are they mentioning these if they are too short? Let's see if the longer the 10 millimeters work. Yeah, that's much better. At least we, we grab the thread of that strain relief. So we, we, we now mounted this. I have no idea why we are just still, like why we're pre-mounting it and we are, what we are doing with that. So position the tool head PCB in the mount. Use the V groove. Ah, uh, they, uh, this is the wrong old. Okay, we're not using those. There's a different, different point. We can hum, okay, that's it, but you're not gonna like it. <laughs> I stone sing. Okay, so there is, I, I did the wrong screws because we, there's a different mounting point down here. There's additional two more um, thread inserts. So we don't need, we need, don't need to do the upper we need to do the lower two, and that's why we probably, yeah, this is, this is going well so far. Okay, so what is the next step? Next step is position the PCB in the mount. Okay, let's do that. It's facing up. This way. Here is the connector. Use the V groove at the top for proper alignment. Yeah, I mean, very much. You cannot, you cannot misalign this because it's just going into this little groove here, as they call it, and you you can you cannot be going wrong, honestly. Now we have uh, longer screws, MT, M3 by 12, and washers that we need to fix the PCB.
Yeah, if you have any suggestions for copyright free music for streaming, maybe I need to make a playlist using the YouTube. But that's not working on Twitch, right? We cannot use the YouTube music library, which we want to stream on Twitch. If you want to stream on Twitch, you probably need to. Maybe we can. We need to go back for some kind of subscription source for music. Currently, I have none. Yeah, but maybe at some point. Uh, and I think we need the additional spaces. We need those aligned tilted spacers uh, which are this here this is a, a tiny piece a tiny spacer that's going to can you can you focus please so there is a little washer and a plastic spacer and that is tilted that's going to help us mount the board because the whole mount itself is also tilted slightly I'm curious is this working okay looks good second one you want the flat side against the washer oh, this wasn't wasn't in maybe we need to release the lower two screws slightly because it's under a slight tension if I'm not wrong so let's try this one more time is the screw long enough? It seems that it's a little bit too short to grab the spacer or the spacer and the motor. There's a little gap here. I'm not sure if this plastic part is under tension, but or I have a screw that is too short. Interesting enough, the right side is working and my yeah this is definitely too short if you ask me did i pick a, accidentally a wrong screw i have no idea that's interesting why is this not working Sending you a link on Discord. Yeah, maybe I'm going to take a look quickly. But here again, I want to figure out why. It's very, very much, it's very much too short. If you ask me, this distance here is... The screws are slightly too short. I mean, no, it doesn't matter. But I think from the specifications uh, from Warren's side, I would say the M3 by 12. We have plenty of space. I mean, the, the distance piece here, there's the, the whole thread is much longer. So there's no problem if we just do a longer screw. But um, having that kind of very short range for the screw to go in i have no trust that this is going to be holding very nicely let's see what, what do we have we have m312 do we have m314 or something in between i think we have m316 Well, I think M316 should also be good. I mean, we, we have enough length uh, here to work with. Let's see. Let's use M316. Um, 
I think that should be. I think that's also feedback for LDO. Hi Daniel and Maker Viking. Jack Faxon, hey. Welcome to the stream. We are building a Voron V0.2 R1 S1 <laughs> since a couple of weeks already. So let me check out what Perfurio sent on Discord. Did you send it as a private message? So I am just not showing it on screen accidentally. Okay, there we go. I think this is perfect. Everything is mounted. PCB is on. Nothing's moving anymore. I hope that stealing two M316 from this bag of screws is not a mistake for later. I have, uh, I mean, I have plenty of other M3 screws packages from other machines and sets, but let's hope for the best. Um, we have done this step here, we mounted this, attached it properly. Mm. Assembly complete. You have successfully completed the assembly and mounting of the LDO Pico Bilical Toolhead PCB. Good. Follow the Warren manual until the electronics and wiring section and start here right after you have secured the mid panel. That's probably going to be a while until we go back to this. The frame PCB cover, by the way, what is our printer doing? Okay, so no temperature problem. You see, no, pro no problem. It's just working. It's as, as never had an issue. Like there was never an issue. And the last print, randomly this temperature problem comes up. I have no idea why. Okay, so let's check the link from Porphyrius. Um, let me see. Music options for streamers. Stream Beats free, live VOD. Yeah, I think Stream Beats was good for now, at least until now. And um, now it's become a paid service and I don't have the subscription yet. I was thinking about going back to uh, Epidemic Sound or um, this is also paid, but the, the advantage there is, is I can also use it on, on YouTube and they have a huge library of video uh, related music and it's like, you for all of the platforms so easier in the end if you have the subscription it's very easy to use and the selection is great probably going back to that so we have a playlist from that in the future so we have some music for the videos our print is done okay let's wait uh, for the cooldown but we don't need that part immediately however so we did do the strain relief, the wire routing cable management. There are loops for zip ties on either side. We don't need those, of course, because the PCB is just at this very spot where we normally have the, the uh, loop mount. Still, we need to do the wiring. I'm, I'm wondering, like, when do we come back to this? Follow the Warren manual until the electronics and wiring section and get started right here after we have secured the mid panel. So, like, where do we start the mid panel? Electronics and wiring. Mid panel? 
I think this is the mid panel, right? Okay. Guess we need to print a couple more parts now. So I'm going to figure out, that's what we were talking about. We need to figure out what kind of mounts we need for the electronics. Um, I have already printed this cover for the power supplies connector so that we don't touch accidentally. No one's gonna touch main power. Um, I think I also printed this fan mount, um, but I did not yet print anything to mount the Raspberry Pi or the, the, P, the Big, T, Big Tree Tech Pi. Let me get, I think they are both having the same layout. That's the, the nice part. So they both have the same Visa 100 sized backplate. So I say, or mount. So we're gonna compare that quickly. I think it is it's good or it's right. Let me get the Raspberry Pi. Where is it here? Is it Pi 4? No, no, no. That's the wrong. Pi 3, model 3B. Okay. I think the question is do we need the B plus or the B? Not sure. Need to figure out which one this is. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. There is a couple of options here. So let me let me take a look. So we have a uh, Raspberry Pi. We have a Raspberry Pi a 3 model B. One point two, and we have this one, which is still mounted into this case. And I have, I'm not sure if it's a Raspberry Pi four. Still want to get it out, huh? Okay, we have. I think it's a three B plus. I'm not that great of an expert regarding. The three models, or the model model three Raspberry Pi. I think there has been a couple of revisions, and I'm not sure if they are actually so much different in terms of the power, co compute power, so to say. But we can figure out. Maybe we just research that quickly. Maybe you guys can figure out in the meanwhile while I'm unassembling this case. What is exactly the, the differences between the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B 1.2 and the 3, the 3 Model B Plus? Is there any noticeable difference? Is it important? Should we? Yeah, there is obviously some difference. I think, was it the Wi-Fi connectivity? Could it be? I think the three B plus has Wi-Fi and the other one doesn't. Is that maybe the one? I, I'm not. I'm not one hundred percent sure anymore, to be honest. It could be the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If that would be the case, I would. I would say we go with the Wi-Fi version. Both have Wi-Fi. Okay. That's interesting. Can you can you point out what the differences are though? Because yeah, it's it's this different processors. I think from the like memory, I always bought models with four gigabyte. But I could could also be wrong. It's this one here, the uh, B 1.2 is from 2015 and the B plus is from 2017. So definitely the B plus is the newer version, but 
They both have one gigabyte, different CPU clock. B plus runs at 1.4 gigahertz and the 3B runs at 1.2. Okay, probably not gonna risk. We're not gonna risk anything um, if we go with the 3B plus. I mean, the 3B we can probably still use for some other project, but the 3B plus is very comparable with the Big Tree Tech Pi 1.2. I think the frequency of the 1.2 is probably a little bit higher, but this is like from a standardization perspective, this is probably the better choice because it's a, yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi and it works with everything, so to say. The only thing that I don't have here is cooling. Uh, additional cooling uh, block here. I think there was, I saw one in the electronics package. There was actually a little heat sink, but that is most likely for the, that was probably, f not sure if this is for the Big Tree Tech mainboard, but <sighs> Not so sure, to be honest. Why that is in here, we're gonna figure out. I think I have a couple of cooling blocks for Raspberry Pi somewhere, we're gonna figure out. So we have these two boards here, which are going to be our, the heart of the system. Big Tree Tech, Pico and Raspberry Pi, and they have the same mounting points, right? So the the, the whole distances are equal and the size is also very comparison a comparison so we need two identical mounts for these um, and then we can so we can attach them to the electronic panel let's choose that mount first let's find it first from LDO's website so we can immediately send it to our printer in the meanwhile, everything should be cooled down so we can take that stuff off and we can uh, we can figure out which mount we need. So we, the, the panel mount we're gonna do in a second, we're gonna find out which, which mounts we need. But there is two, two parts to do this. I think I printed at least this, um, let me find it. I think I printed these mounts at least. Here we go. At least we have those. This is for the fan. This is for the main board, uh, for the power supply. And these two mounts here are, um, they are going to the back of the Visa mounts. And here they have two little um, snap-in pieces that go into this panel. And then we use additional screws to fix it. But these are already printed. We only need to print the Visa mounts gonna find them most likely in the list of the Warren parts. That was uh, Warren, Google Drive or was it, was it, I think it was my Google Sheet. Where was it? Um, here we go, V02 print list, we have somewhere, I think it's much lower, electronics, this is what we need, um, we need this part twice, yeah we need this part twice. So let's connect to our printing computer. Yes. So 
on the printing computer we can da -da -da, open this link and we can jump to yeah that computer is noticeably slower there's the electronics section here we go so we need to print this i've jumped over to the printing computer and uh, i don't want to And there's a couple of mistakes in this table, obviously. Um, electronics. Here we go. Let me, don't make me do this now. Okay, so. So we're downloading this part. New project. Nope. And we need two copies. So let's go and remove our plate first and then we're gonna kick off the print from the workshop see you in a second nice that part finished and it's coming out nicely no temperature issues so let's do the next one let's kick off the print yeah last week i decided i'm gonna have a dedicated computer an old older laptop here however um, in this workshop that is going to be having all of the print profiles because I had them on multiple PCs on my laptop and in the studio and blah 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 and now I have one not so powerful PC but still capable enough and all of the print profiles are going to be there and then now I can connect to this computer via RDP and always have everything that I'm printing on that machine that's much more convenient and it's starting already good yes you have been disconnected I know. Great. So let's go back to this page. So this is the PCB back panel. I guess that you can imagine how this works. We have this PCB and then we have this little cover and that's going to cover our backside. So basically nothing is exposed anymore. And we have just the space three for connecting our extension cables. And the second one, I think this second plug here is for the ADXL 345 accelerator, accelerometer, um, to connect that. So now we are printing these, uh, should be done in, for how long does it take? Um, does it say 38 minutes 
Okay, let's let's see. Let's wait for that. That's probably just coming back. Done when we need it. Um, so we are stepping back to the panel installation. Flip the printer and let's figure this out. So let's put this away. We don't need that. Ah, which side? This way up. All good. Now we need this specific plate from the stack of panels and transparent and non-transparent panels. Let's figure out which one is that. So these are all door panels and side panels. This is most likely what we're looking for, mid panel. Yes, that's what we need. And there is, first of all, we need to remove this paper sticker, which is protecting our nice black surface. Because we can't do that later, we have to do it right now. Later it's going to be very difficult. So, Alexander, I think B plus has gigabit ethernet. That could be. I think we don't need gigabit ethernet. I'm more saying maybe we want to have the higher frequency and the more modern processor just in case i think that's the bare minimum configuration that we want and if we find out that it's not powerful enough we can always swap it out and say even i think without any software change just by swapping the sd card from from that raspberry pi into another raspberry pi and a newer version i think it still should still be working to boot it with a new mainboard. I think I did that already some time back. Because the software itself is the same, so the operating system. And in the worst case, we just copy the config files and reinstall it. It's nothing too serious. So, 10, 100,000 on both, both have gigabit. If the v, VW is power enough, then the 2B will be. The 2B, yeah, that's not 3B actually, is probably then even more powerful, right? I don't know what the 2W uh, comparison um, Raspberry Pi is. The bigger model is this the three or the three b or is it even the two is it an older version i have no idea but it's it's still impressive that even though we are running a printer at high speed it's still it's still the older versions are still enough to run all of that stuff however it could be if we want to do an external camera and maybe some time-lapsing functionality, but that's where probably we'll see some limitations. But we will see, I and mean, we can still figure it out. Now we have this nice electronics panel. How is it going to go in here? Aligning the preloaded nuts into position. These nuts here. And how is the alignment of this panel? this way so we have to sure aligning the preloaded nuts into position for the mid panel is easier if you don't have to find gravity 
we highlighted the correct holes here for you. Did you? How did you highlight them? I'm curious. Where, where, where did you highlight anything? Did, do you see any highlighted holes? <laughs> I don't see any highlighting. We, are, we highlighted the correct holes here for you. I don't see anything highlighted, honestly. If I'm, I mean, what, what, what do you mean, highlighted? <laughs> Nothing is highlighted, honestly. Nothing is highlighted. It goes in like that. We have a couple of holes here that we need. It slides in just here. We have on both sides, we have two slide in nuts uh, right here in this extrusion. If I'm not mistaken, we need to use, I mean, we only have two in each extrusion. So my, my best guess is we weren't going to use one at the very bottom and then, uh, two at the very bottom and two at the very top. All right. Um, actually, that makes the most sense to me. So here I can see one. Here's the second one. The other ones are still too far out. Okay, let's try this one more time. Here we should be good. But I, I actually I didn't see anything highlighted in this. This, um, this is quite strange. <sighs> Why is it saying we highlighted the correct holes? I don't see that, honestly. There's no highlights. There's a low light. <laughs> okay. Here we highlighted something. What? what, what? Secure the rear panel to the preloaded nuts. Mm. The two empty holes are for what? The Bowden extruder, which uses an alternate older tool head. Now we're not using that. Okay, attach the Dean cleats in your desired location. How is this going to work? Dean cleats. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's understand how many screws we need. I've, I understand that there is six screws, but for whatever reason, I only have four preloaded nuts in these extrusions. If I otherwise, oh, maybe there's, no, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. There's actually six. I just had one, I missed them. So now I think we're getting closer to where we need to be. So we have those aligned like that. One, two, should be good. Okay, what kind of screws do we need? M3, 6, okay, let's find them. M3, 6. This is all empty bags. Uh, here we go. So Benji tonight, can you zoom in? Okay, can zoom in, you can try. Better now? See this? See this better now? 
Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So here you see the preloaded nuts are now in the correct positions behind these holes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're starting here. Probably want to align this panel so it doesn't protrude out anywhere on the side. Starting in this little corner here. So I'm holding it. And I'm not gonna fix it yet. So I don't, I don't want that this comes out on the on either side. This is good. Okay. So we're gonna do the top left now. Is there anything sticking out? No. We do it like with the car tires, always cross over. Actually, I didn't change car tires myself since a couple of years now, but that is what I remember. Okay, everything seems to be good and fixed. Now, I am wondering, um, did we use the correct screw hole positions? I guess at least it should be right. Let's double check again if we used this, the, the right ones. We had used the top holes, we had used the middle, but not the higher, like they were just the lowest of the middles on the left hand side. Then on the right hand side it's, it's obvious because there's no other holes and then we use the bottom two here. Uh, what is left for us to use for the mounts? I'm curious how these are going to be pushed in. What are Dean cleats? I, I don't know. Get a VG, VHB and you get a VHB. If you do not want to use the Dean clips and cleats, you, you can alternatively attach the board mount directly to the mid panel with VHB tip. Okay, but I think it's more elegant to use these clips. Um, still, I want to understand how to clip them on. Uh, how is this working? Dean cleats. Is this something that we still have to print? Uh, it looks like this is a part that is going under this mount. So we have actually three parts that work together as a... And they are using VHB tape to fix those. Where are they in this list? Is this the VHB D mount times two? Okay, now we probably need to print those as well. As well. But theoretically, we could just, uh, just use the electronics um, D mount and just use the VHB tape directly without even these clips. And I'm wondering why they even have those then. Uh, I guess it's sticking out quite, quite a bit. If we have this clip, then we have this clip, and then we have this mount on top. It's definitely a huge difference in the distance from the panel. I mean, it has more distance, so it has more airflow. But uh, yeah, we can we can just get them from the printer as soon as we have them, and we see how we like it or not like it. Okay, is there anything else to know about the wirings stuff here? We use M3, M210 self-tapping screws to fix those to the mounts. We can also do the power supply now. That is only glued with tape. 
Okay. Why not? Why not do that now? Okay, so we could we could take the power supply and glue it. Tape it on. I think the VHB tape is here. This is the tape. As a there's a roll of that double-sided tape coming with the kit. They have thought about everything since they delivered everything. This is also nice and tiny. That reminds me from the size. That could be a, a 3.5 floppy drive. That's probably about the size. Um, if you know what that is, of course. <laughs> if you don't know what the v, what a 3.5 inch floppy drive is, then you're much younger. No worries. <laughs> it's not a knowledge gap that you should fill. Um, let's... At least you don't have to do it urgently. Um, okay, putting the printer on its back. <laughs> it's actually funny because it's not so easy. The print head is sticking out, so we probably shouldn't put weight on it. Still, we want to do this correctly and we want to look at the drawing. So if it's like that, in the drawing it shows us that the power supply is supposed to be here. Like this. So I guess we want to stick it as much in this corner as possible and then glue it on the back, on the lower panel with the, the VHB tape. Let's clean the back side a bit with alcohol, just to be sure we're not having any grease on there and also not on the panel. Just double checking that. Good enough, I would say. Then we'll have the tape. Benchy tonight, Benchy tonight. Yeah, I can hear you, I hear you. I'm with you. Maybe, maybe not. I said last time we want to do the electronics and then mount everything. I think I've rethought about that. Um, I think it's actually better if we have these things in place. It's just double work. Uh, unnecessary double effort. So let's get some of this tape on the power supply. And the way how this works is you should not cut this tape with scissors because it's gonna stick everywhere on the scissors. So we have to really use a knife to cut it. And it's very, very sticky, which is nice, but of course that's supposed to be super sticky, but it's also very flexible. And I think two strips are probably good enough already. This, this holds very well. These kind of tapes are surprisingly good. And you should not get your fingers and dirt on it, of course. Why are they not coming off? Yeah, problem is sometimes these protective films, they are very thin. You have to get something in between. I think it's now. So that's first. And second, 
So now we have to align it before we put it down because otherwise it won't move anymore. Okay. And push it down. It's gonna hold it for a couple of seconds. So we can, yeah, if we can probably move the heated bed a little bit away. So we're getting the hands in between. Now push, the panel is moving, but not the power supply. So I think there shouldn't be any air bubbles anymore in between. The panel is still moving a little bit in the slot here, but the power supply is most likely not going to go anywhere. And it's noticeably heavier now, of course. So, that's that. Good. What next? We secured the power supply. Benchy, when Benchy. <laughs> Hashtag when Benchy. Input voltage switch. I think I checked that already. Did I? Is there such a switch? I don't see any any switch here. Where should this be if it's there? Interesting. Yes. I don't see any switch here. It's input 110 to 220. Is it a flexible input maybe? It looks like there's no switch anywhere. But it's, uh, then it should be flexible input power. No, there's no switch. If you ask me, there's no switch. Where should it be? It's supposed to be here, but I don't see any switch, honestly. Maybe they mentioned that oh, we have, if we have one, one option is that this is again a difference between the versions of the you can check in this additional guide. Uh, okay, maybe we did a mistake here and we did, we should use different mounts. Oh my goodness. This is again a difference, a difference of the, of the main manual. The stock thing cleats and mount will not work with Pi zero two W okay that's it's not something we're using. Is this only the problem with the two W? No, is it? Okay. Use the screw mount Dean cleans Dean with the EPI expansion. Dean second clean and we use this Pico and Pico mount times two. Pico mount. X2, what is that? I think that's what I printed. Huh? Yeah, I think that's what I printed. Pi expansion clips. With the Pi expansion clips. Pi expansion clips. What's that? A 
looks slightly different. Okay, I think we can figure that out. Um, different clips and mounts and stuff for the electronic boards. In the worst case, we're gonna use tape. <laughs> We're just gonna tape everything on the back and that's it. I don't care. Page 197 to 198. Please refer to the LU wiring guide. Okay, so this is where we are now. This is probably the difference here. Um yeah, we need to we need the clips, we need these we each we need these mounts and understanding why how to use them. The, we still have to do some heat set inserts for the fan mounts. Where is it? Here. So. Let's do that. Okay, we have this little piece here. And where are we doing heat set inserts? Is there going to be four? Yes. Okay, four heat set inserts. Mm, wrong temperature. Okay, we need to have it we have to have it cool down. We did have the wrong tip on now. Doesn't matter. Can do it in a couple of minutes. Okay, so a couple of things to clarify, obviously. One is um, how do we mount the boards? Looks a little confusing to me uh, how they mention all these different options of mounting the boards and extension clips and blah, blah, and Dean cleats. Um, didn't print all of that yet because I wasn't sure what what will go together and what will work. I suggest that we that we first use um, what was printed already is these two clips here and see whether we want to use these Dean cleat uh, clips whatever how much that sticks out. I mean, it sounds rather interesting how it works, but honestly, if I'm like, let's think about it. Like how often are we gonna take this off? Very likely not, never, right? Once this is mounted, once this is on the back panel, why would you want to take it off? Only for completely replacing it, right? So if it's broken, but then this is overkill. I mean, then we just to use the, just to remove the screws. I mean, we can just unscrew the Raspberry Pi from the mount. We don't even have to remove the mount from the back of the printer. Honestly, we just leave it on. Okay, so let's let's put, let's pretend we have done this. Let's also go to the mentioned electronics wiring guide. Let's see what that is. Wiring the Kirigami bed and the Umbilipiku Milikul 2 tool head. Okay, so let's check out what we have here. Wiring this. Okay, we understand how, which connectors are going in here. This is great. This, this is, we'll do that. We're going to do it right now. And then the deck panel. Your kit should include a pre-wired AC inlet. Let's check if we have that. I've seen this, I guess. Oh yeah, that's the case. Okay, so we have that connector. I love these. Making things more secure. There's also fuses. I'm not sure if we need 
the fuses already or if there's already a fuse in here we'll have to see that if we want to remove oh, there is already a fuse in here so we don't need to add a new one oh. we need tape hangers we definitely need tape hangers my friends need to print out more mounting stuff for my whack back wall so we have that ground and um, l in and n okay take the inlet cable included in the kit and attach the wires using the buff layout as reference when wired correctly your live wire will be protected by a fuse and the switch on the front side of the inlet will operate correctly lights up when switched on Preparing the power supply. I honestly, there is no such twitch switch here. No switch here. There's, there's nothing. For me, it looks like it will be automatically detecting the power. I mean, it also says input from two. So if it says from 110 to 220, well, it should be flexible, right? Um, Otherwise, it's going to burn up in flames if we, uh, if it's not. Good. Where's the power cable? Here we have it. This little cable trunk here. Let's connect this. So, neutral. Just doing as in the drawing. Well, it's not that easy. Very stiff. So, should I use pliers maybe? It's very difficult to hold the connectors. So, we have a blue one. Oh, this is should be indeed that hard but it's also I mean there is uh, almost zero gap here maybe that was pressed too much I think there needs to be a tiny gap here at least and here there's zero gap on this one so we cannot push anything in between here honestly So, hopefully that makes it a bit easier. Come on. <sighs> what is happening? Why is this so difficult? Super stiff super hard to push this over I mean it has to be firmly attached that's that's for sure but it should not it shouldn't be that hard to push it over it should be there should be some resistance but not that crazy come on I feel that it's simply too, too narrow. I think it's better now, but I'm not sure yet. It's going to go over now. Okay. That, that's, that's releasing too easy. Huh? This is probably just a, it's a very thin 
Let's fall a line. Why, why, why? Now it's coming off too easy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Why does it have to be so complicated? Friends. It's not on there yet completely. If I'm not. What is wrong? This is crazy. Do I have to make my own? Hmm? Um, I did this myself lately and worked perfectly, honestly. I did my own connectors for the other main boards. <sighs> this is stupid. Oh my goodness. It's not staying on now. For whatever reason it is not working now. Is it, is it, is it maybe I'm missing. Is it sliding to the side? Let's see. Let's, let's try the other ones. It's just the brown one that is now getting off too easy. Why is it not working? It should be sliding over and it's, it's blocking. I don't see an obvious reason why this isn't working. Simply not moving. <sighs> it's just brute force. This is stupid. Yeah, I like the build until this point. Um, these connectors are just crap, if you ask me. I'm, I'm just about to, th I'm just thinking, I'm just gonna take them off and put my own connectors on there. I don't know what happened here. But maybe it's, it, they were pressed so like crazy that they're now not working anymore. They either don't come over here, not working to push this over Ah, now, ah, at least I got it. Ah, what, what was wrong? Is it just brute forcing the stuff? What we have to do? Why is it not moving? Stupid. It's not working. The only one that's now firmly sitting on is the blue. The other two are... I don't know what's wrong here. They are not, you know what, I'm gonna push them over, I'm gonna open them, I'm gonna push them over, and I'm gonna squeeze them. So they're not gonna come off. This must be, it's probably the only way how this is gonna work. Okay, so sitting on, I'm gonna squeeze them. Okay, not going off. Same for this brown one. I'm gonna st still going over. I'm gonna squeeze them. So hope that it's not it's not coming off again. It 
it's not moving better now not I mean this wasn't elegant honestly this was not elegant but yeah that's how it is good 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 let's go back to the manual um we did the connection we we have no switch here on the power supply we aligned why is this why is this power supply supposed to sit there i don't know why should there, there be distance my friends why for well, what should be there like why do you distance this does it even matter Wait a minute. <sighs> okay, that's my mistake. I did I did put the power supply in this corner because it was in the original manual. Now they say put it uh, 20 millimeters from the side. Okay, placing the power supply. Make sure to leave a small gap of about 20 millimeters between the front extrusion and the deck panel. So this is to provide clearance for a display. Mm, okay, so maybe we should do that. <laughs> maybe we should. And let's take it off again. That is unfortunate, but necessary, obviously. So, taking the power supply to a different position. We're just gonna use new tape, I guess. Just gonna remove the tape, use new tape. These are the, t this is what I don't like about the manual, honestly. These, there's so many points where you like, Okay, yeah, this is not like the original. Now do it differently. Now jump to page X. Now, uh, no, don't do this. Don't do it like in on page blah 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 of the manual. Uh, you always have to be super careful with this war with the LDO kit that you don't follow the original manual at some point and then you go to the other manual and follow that manual instead. Um, I wish they would put the time in and just make one guide with everything in for the specific version. But yeah, I'm complaining and it's my own fault, but Still, this is not. <sighs> this is probably for someone who is just doing this for the first time. It's already, I don't know, subpar experience at least. But again, I think the, the quality of the kit itself is, is great. However, there are these little things that make it unnecessary complicated. Uh, so maybe we can, we can uh, figure out how this is going to work. The cable comes in here. Okay, we can probably plug that in. Nice, nice. Good, okay, so that works. We have this cable channel, it comes in the package. 
as per the drawing we need to we need to cut it um, so it is close to the Z motor and going uh, across this whole frame. So how do we do this? We we'll probably just mention that they okay. So what they do is trim two ninety centimeter pieces and then also trim them diagonal. Um, the easiest way to do this is with the right tools. So let me bring that. That's going to be a little messy. You know what we have to, we probably want Just gonna bring them. Oh, it's still cooling down, so I have to wait. Dean mounts are still cooling down, so the printer is not willing to give them yet. So we will. We will create a little mess here. Additionally to the mess we already have, take this mount here, this rail, I'm gonna cut it into a few pieces. Two pieces, nine centimeters long, as per the manual. This time I'm doing the right thing, hopefully. Now, when they say we're going to cut two pieces to nine millimeters, uh, nine centimeters, and then also angle them. So I'm not sure if if the cutter, the side cutter, is going to work for this. If it's sharp enough, it could, but it's very. Very stiff. The other solution we have is this cutting tool. Very simply. That's why it's a little messy. Come on. But it's just simply, it's simply working. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And we can angle 45 degrees very easily with this. Come on. Don't let me down. So we definitely have to dust again after this. Good. So now we need to angle these pieces. We want to have a 45 degree angle on these two pieces. So this is the top covers. Gonna keep the top covers on for the cutting. Also have to deburr this a little bit later. So these are the pieces, so we want to have one cut like this, one cut like this. So there is going to be the cutout for the motors, for the Z motor. So let's try, oh, just want to have a good grip on this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be somewhat accurate. Still good, okay. 
That plastic moves a little. Okay. Probably have to clean clean the part anyways later. Oh, let's see. Can we clean? Are we through yet? Not yet. Ah, come on. Good. This first piece is done. Yeah, the kit quality is great. The manual quality is, yeah, sub, subpar, below the expectations that I would have for a manual like that. For such a complex project, such a bad manual, so many jump points, it's, yeah. Okay, so I need this way. Yeah, this is this is correct. So I want to get closer to the edge. I want to leave that, and again. Let's not slide it so much here. Keep it in place. through yet no not not completely okay so probably need to deeper corners of this but it's it's already almost I'm uh, gonna get a file for that so we have to do some dusting here Otherwise, this is going to be impossible to work in the next steps. Excuse me for a second. Yeah, I've told you that this is going to take the evening. I'm probably very right about this.
Gut. I guess it's clean now and we can mount this. So here is the supposed position. I don't know how close to the motor, but should be kind of a little bit of a distance. We can place things here now without how we do this. This is again the power supply. It should have, at least from the drawing, it's kind of has put has contact with this part, but we still want to have distance. And they say we want to have two centimeters up here. Two centimeters is pretty much pushing this against the motor. There's not much space here. Okay, so it, it looks like it's quite it's quite close. Yeah, probably want to do the power supply first. Keep these two centimeters of distance uh, from the top. And then we can fix those cable chains, cable channels. Good. Yeah, and here we go again, doing the tape again. It's good that we have plenty of tape left. That was a little annoying, to, to say the least, that we had to, in the manual, we had to jump to this other page and we did the wrong alignment first. Anyway, not a huge deal. So, good. Now we will attach that power supply again. Hopefully this time to the correct position and in the correct orientation. Come on, same problem as last time, this film is not getting off. Why? Why is it not going off? Come on. Okay, number one. This is frustrating. Ah, okay, good. Will be Wednesday next week. Let me check the, the chat. Creva 3 d hey, good evening. Never managed to catch on live before. Hope you're liking the build. Yeah, I like it so far. Um, what I don't like, uh, I like the quality of the kit, but I don't like the manual. It uh, has so many, so many uh, changes um, versus the original, and you always have to jump back and forth. Creeper 3D. I'm currently printing my first bench on my Ender. 3NG that's still in beta and has no wiring or config manual whatsoever. In the 3NG, oh, that's that sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. That's a core XY conversion 
of the Ender 3. Uh, I'm really curious to learn, maybe you can tell the others um, whether this is requiring new frame parts, because as far as I know or I've read about it, you can just use the original extrusions that come with the Ender 3. So, let us know how it goes and uh, I'm, I'm really most interested about how much additional parts do you need to get if you have, if you want to build that. And what original, what printer did you start on? Did you start on an Ender 3 or an Ender 3 Pro or an Ender 3 V2 to build it? Because that's, I think there is different um, changes required for these different printers or you need different printed parts and stuff, I don't know. But yeah, that sounds really interesting. Great, great, great. So let's remove the covers from these channels. Okay, so I'm gonna put tape on that as well if I'm not wrong. Yeah, we're gonna tape them with VHB tape. So we should also leave a small gap for the motor. So we have a little bit of spacing there uh, to run the wires across. So let's have a couple of millimeters gap here. Okay, this is the first one. And again, I need the tape to come off. So this first one we want to place, so we have, I will run it against the power supply, but we'll still leave a little bit of gap here and a little bit of gap on the side. So a couple of millimeters here, a couple of millimeters there. So we can still run stuff around the corners. Here we have a little space underneath, so there's, there's air gap between the motor and the panel, so we can run stuff under. Um, yeah, I think it's good. So Kriva 3D, if you're still there, I'm interested to hear about your Ender 3 NG conversion. Give us a few, if you want to give us a few insights, I'm, I'm interested to hear them. There's probably a couple other people here that, that might be candidates for building an Ender 3 NG. Come on, why is this always so, so tedious here, removing these tape stripes, come on. So, the second one, keep some gap here, and some gap there, I guess this is good. So, now it looks much better than before. The mechanical part went smooth with your build, okay. Good to hear. Okay. 
electronics wise there is no guide yet so far that was careful planning okay Good. I'm sure we will need these cables very soon. Let's have them close. Stuff. So much stuff. Good. What next? What's next? We did, we did place the power supply. We already cut these channels and glued stuff. Then we will now connect the AC inlet to the 24 volt power supply. Okay, that is 220 volt main. Um, this is the cable. I guess the idea is that we're entering this channel at some point here through one of these gaps. And now push it down. There's hopefully enough space to do this. Okay. Um, in is blue, L, or was it blue? What color did they use? They put blue in for the in and the brown for L. I guess it's just the other way around. L is brown. Really? Are you sure? Yeah, L is brown and N is blue. Okay, L is brown, L, L should be, but it's also swapped. <laughs> so <laughs> that power supply is exactly the opposite of the drawing. I can't, I hope I can, I can show this to you. Can we go closer? Yeah, so the blue power is N, so the neutral this is the line cable the l is the brown on the drawing it says the middle pin here is for blue but it's it's not so l is it is it correct no it's it's actually this this pin here yeah it's on the right hand side that's how it should be. L is brown and L is out the outer pin. Okay. But I'm not sure if we want the cables to be that close to the corner. Can we have them a little more in the channel please i mean yeah we could i think it's yeah there's there's a little bit of distance here and we can't go too sharp around the corners i guess yeah this i mean it looks quite clean in terms how the cables run if we go out here yeah this is this is okay So, theoretically, we could test the power supply now. I think we should, because if we have anything done wrong here, we should find out immediately, to be honest, not later. Let us figure this out. Let's figure this out. Switch this off. Okay, um, there is no fan on the power supply. There's a control LED. 
we could we could test out my new multimeter let's check if it works so anyway good chance good opportunity to test new stuff for example a new multimeter so shameless plug the Weaver sent me a, a brand new multimeter and oscilloscope, digital oscilloscope to test. And I think it's the perfect opportunity to do this right now to figure out if our little power supply works as expected using this new multimeter. Okay. So let's prepare this. We want to measure uh, the output power voltage here. Prepare the multimeter. Batteries, three batteries go in. So let's close this. What else do we have here? The measurement cables and an oscilloscope, oscillometer tip. Hopefully great, hopefully good enough qualities for measurements. So what do we need to connect? We want ground. We want to measure voltage okay so let's see voltage constant power let's see how much we get out of this power supply okay so let's turn it on we have uh, minus and plus so we, these are minus these are plus we should get 24 volts. Okay. Yes. Looks correct. Is there any other voltage here? Hope not. Power supply is has no 220 volt on anything. Oh, so we're not we're not hurting ourselves with this. But that seems to be working. Let's see if we can use the oscilloscope for I'm just curious how to do that. Um, let me see. I think we can. Can we figure out how this works without a manual? I'm always a fan of things that work without a manual, honestly. So, could I get some kind of voltage measurement to see how stable the voltage is? If we have any great fluctuations, let me see if this works. Okay, let's figure out oscilloscope operation. 
can also in multimeter mode dim. How do we do that? Current rate, press the R key for two seconds. Okay, we're pressing the R key. Oh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Let's see what we get. I am so curious now how stable the voltage is. Can we measure that? Okay, that's the ground pin. Okay. So we got a little wave here, but for me, I have to understand how the range is and how much of a difference is there is. Trigger level. I think I think I have to read the manual first. But does it make a difference which pin I use? Zero point ten volt average, zero point ten volt average fluctuation. That's probably not much. Zero point one volt. Okay. Interesting. Ja, I think I have to learn how to use this thing. That sounds really interesting. Could be quite useful for measuring power supply quality and stuff. So we're gonna definitely give it a, a more thorough test. But it seems that the power supply is, is working. It has no issues with 220 volts. Uh, because I was afraid a little bit whether we had to, we don't have a switch for that, but it's it's good. So it detects it detects the power. What's next? We connected the power cables checkpoint. Uh, LED should light light up. It did. And we can now remove the plug, of course. Did also check the power and the, and the voltage. Good, good. No white smoke coming out, great. Fonon, oh, we didn't see you for a while. Welcome. Andrew Clark, hey, welcome to the stream. So we are, we are just in the middle of the electronics for the V0. Now, what next? Finishing off with low deck wiring. So, we need to connect a couple more cables. Um, so, I checked the cables. We connected this part. Let me just see. Yeah, so, we connected all of that. What is uh, next here is Two things, basically to the PQ Billicle and to main PCB. We have, then we have the bed heater and the bed RGB cable and the bed thermistor cables. And we have an end stop switch. Z stepper end stop. All of these, where are they going through? It's an interesting question. I mean, here we do not have yet. It looks a little bit like there is some kind of cover already here, which I'm I'm wondering where is this coming from, because this part definitely looks different at the moment. We don't have that piece actually mounted yet, and I'm wondering why. I'm wondering why they have that on this picture because definitely we didn't yet we didn't yet close this gap here 
that we, we did not mount anything here. Right. So I am I'm definitely wondering what are we supposed to put there? Is this I don't know, is this this part that we printed? Is that going to be here? I don't think so, is it? Is it that part? No, is it it's not probably doesn't really fit in here. So I was just wondering where if this could be the part that goes in there, but I'm not so sure. So let's let's take a step back. We did we did make sure we wanted to do 192 and 196. This is for mounting Raspberry Pis, which we can do now. And we have 197 and 198. Um, which is these two pages. Then we have 199 and 200, which is back to the original manual, blah, blah, blah. This is duplicate, this is duplicate. Um, because page 203 to 206 are again covered by the other guide. Now we have uh, again electronics and wiring. Mm. Just trying to understand where where we have to go with the field path now. So yeah, this is uh, this is good, but I'm I'm trying to understand where this this panel uh, is. There is this little, there's this plastic cover here and another plastic cover over here that I don't have yet. So we have to, I have want to figure out where this is installed, where this is happening. Skirts and panels, maybe the skirts are the, the answer. There's front skirt, left side, right side, rear, but that's still not the thing. And on this guide, there is no plastic cover here. There's nothing closing this hole, honestly. It's still open. So maybe it's not getting, it's not really closed at all. It doesn't seem so, honestly. They're already installing other stuff here. This is the PCB that's definitely mounted on top of the printer, not at the bottom. So it looks like this whole area is actually open and it's not closed. So I was just very much confused about, um, again, things in the menu that aren't actually there. So we did this, uh, these two things. This is the, the electronics manual. Let's jump again. So here we have a couple of cables, but for me, it looks like we just didn't make sure that we're running the cables all around this corner here. Basically, we just make sure that all the cables are going this direction and nowhere else, um, but also not more to do, honestly. So now we need the uh, power cables that go to the pick umbilical and to main PCB. Main PCB, um, we'll connect one of the one of the pins here. Let's unscrew. So we have minus and plus. You have to be careful not to confuse stuff here. You can still burn up stuff in flames. So, okay, so one of the minus cables go here. So we wanna put it this way. Okay, so that's minus. And then we have the plus over here.
this cable is supposed to run uh, yeah, to the front. Where is this going to? We have to choose whether we want to exit here or there. I'm just going to put it in this channel for now. And then we have a second power cable. That's going to the pick umbilical. Probably this one or one of these. Uh, this is a power cable 5 volt to Raspberry Pi. This is for later. Here we have a motor cable. Here's the, here's the pick umbilical. Uh, I'm looking in the wrong camera. It's the pick umbilical cable. That's connecting the tool head with our PCB board. And this is a power supply that goes 24 volt in, I'm wondering. Um, this is quite long actually. But we still need 24 volt, right? We need a two, two times 24 volt output. So we do the second cable again, plus and minus. And we'll also run this around this corner and around under the stepper motor if we decide to have it coming out to the other end and here. So all of that, I think we should need, should use this, this hole here. It's a little cleaner. So now we can decide whether where we want to run these power cables. That's, that's, do we decide it in a second? Yes, 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 to UMB. Um, that's how it looks for me. That's exactly how it looks now. That's great. They do it like this. They run it around that corner. I can also run it around the other corner, as, as they say. Then... We have a set mode or cable as well. I think this is the cable, is it? One, two. Yeah. Uh, this is probably the cable. Motor cable that I missed. And E stepper is also a cable. That we need to do. From that perspective we have all of the cables that we need coming from the bottom of the printer. They're all done. Um, now we come to software installation and preparation. I will jump, let, let me, let's stay on this here and let's jump to this page because we have, now we have our little mounts ready. They should be ready to take them from the printer. Let me briefly take those, bring them. So, back in a second. So, we still have enough material in the printer, so we could theoretically print some stuff. If we need any further mounts for anything, we can still send it to the printer. Okay, so what I've brought here, uh, I brought these Visa mounts for our Raspberry Pi and 
the Pico board. I will, I think that honestly, I mean, they are supposed to be mounted to this back panel here. That's where they're supposed to be attached to. So this is the, the back side of the printer. So we, we should have them here. Now the question is, let's say we are just using tape and to fix them like this. That could work. Hopefully, I think it's, this is exactly the position. So uh, they place the Raspberry Pi. I mean, we can just do it like they did. We can place the Raspberry Pi here. And uh, it looks like this orientation. So this is where it's supposed to be. More or less, I think the distance is more or less determined by these two little screws here, which are in the way. And it could, yeah, I mean, it's, it, there's no exact position where this has to be. I think what I want is that I can still reach the USB plugs here, that I can reach those connectors. Where I see, like we, we will, at the end, we'll have a panel up here. Let's, let's pick this and see. Rear panel, bottom. Rear panel, bottom, rear panel, bottom. I don't know if this, is this rear panel? So it will at some point be closed like this, I don't, I'm, I'm sure. And we have still plenty of room, like we still have huge distance that we could do. The uh, downside I see already is that reaching the lower USB connectors here with a cable that is that has a huge plug, for example, or where the plug is a little clunky and bulky, um, it's probably not possible to plug that cable in here uh, after the fact. So if you want to connect something later, because the Raspberry Pi sits now very low from seen from the top, that could be an issue. If we could have it up a little bit, just a little bit raised away from this, then I would say, okay, that, that, makes, that makes sense to me why we could have a, a different distance piece here. And that's where these plastic parts come. Where is this um, distance piece here? Here, this is, this is the part. That's where these clips come in play. So you mount these together then you have this clip and then you have another part that is that clips onto a an holding piece and that's that piece is actually glued to the back and we should still with that and the clip and stuff we should still be enough yeah then it's coming up pretty high right? that's that's there's nothing in between that's a little bit bothering on the other hand, we'll, we can also use uh, thicker tape. I have some tape, some VHB tape that is definitely thicker. So we could win, I don't know, can you win maybe uh, two millimeters or something. And if we just win two millimeters here, we could already have enough spacing that we can still reach the, the USB plugs. The problem is here with this extrusion. Like if you wanna plug in something from here, it's more or less the upper USB connector that you can reach. But hey, Tutum Carmen! Welcome! Welcome tonight! Um, yeah, again, maybe moving that a little more up gives us also a bit more space to plug. But we are totally free to move things. I guess we are good if we just use the tape. We use a little bit of a thicker tape, um, not this thin version. And it's also, if I use, it's also broader. So it's, it's gonna be a little bit more stable than this very thin tape that we have in the kit. But that's probably just a matter of taste. Let me bring that. 
also, before I leave, um, I want to go to the shop and I will go here and take a few parts. So I have got some nicer tape here and that is definitely a lot thicker than the one that comes in this kit. It's very similar, still it's very much the same principle, same type of tape. We have these Where's my... So maybe you cannot hear me now. And here we go again. Duck, 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 go. Come on. Yes. We are done. I had to print. Let me check my list. Uh, spreadsheet ring. Okay, I got. A Twenty five LED rings done. Okay. Twenty five done. Twenty five bodies, but we still need to print ten. Um, mainboard holders, not yet. H Two pieces. Uh, we need one more. Then and off they go. So Not yet finished. This is pretty action. So we have a one printer free now mm, that we could use for something else. Let's, I would say, we go back. Okay. So, there is a huge batch production running since, I don't know, too long again. So many days, non-stop, non-stop printing since two weeks, if I'm not wrong, 24-7, all of these printers. I got two more printers in last week. We, I got an additional P1 Two additional P1S. Um, I've got the AMS for my older P1P. So now all of them, all of the bamboos have a, an AMS unit, which wasn't the case before. And I learned that this is, uh, even though it's 
sounds um, unnecessary if you have uh, only one color in or if you're printing single color but I learned that it's so much better if you have something um, that should visually look perfect if you have a spool change and you have a longer you have a longer pause between like the end of the previous spool and you you realizing the spool is empty and then the next spool needs to be inserted and stuff uh, needs to happen as soon as possible so if you don't have this automatic filament change function with an AMS there's gonna be a cooldown even though the printer keeps the heated bed heated and theoretically also the chamber still if your PLA or any other material is left unattended in the printer for a longer period it's going to start shrinking and then you have gaps in your print and then it could break apart so that's why having uh, multiple rolls of the same type uh, in for the same color so it the printer will automatically swap to the next spool once the first spool is empty and that is if you run a print farm even though this is a is a ridiculously small print farm still <laughs> but if you run batch production you want to have the most quality output like this and you want to have the most like say less uh, the least amount of errors you need uh, an automatic filament switching system um, and it's not like not for the purpose of color multi-color printing but just for the purpose of switching to the next spool in the shortest amount of time possible even if you're not there <sighs> okay <sighs> Wish I was sacked from the CCTV job. The place we are fitting it into is way too big. My legs are aching from all the walking around and ladder climbing. Okay, yeah, I heard about this installation job that you're doing at the moment, Tutum Carmen. The place is so big that it takes almost three minutes to walk from the front door to the back door and in the NVR is located by the back door. NVR, is this the controlling room? Or what is it? Okay, so um, let's let's attach the uh, little boys here. Let's attach our little Raspberry Pi and Big Tree Tech Pico to these holders. There is our bigger tape here on on the back, and it's a little thicker, so two millimeters, and a little wider. So what do we need in terms of screws? M2 by 10 self-tapping screws. We have um, this here, this little back here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What screwdriver is required? Uh, is this the two millimeters? No, it's the 1.5, of course. Okay, so let's start over here. Why is it not magnetized? It's my magnetizer. Uh, it's in the workshop. Okay, I'm too lazy to go there now. Uh, we're gonna do it anyways. Okay, let's, let's start like this. First one. Just have to hit the first corner with a hammer. Oh, that's protruding a little. The screws are a little too long. M210, are you sure, my friend? M210? It's, it sounds a little... That is unfortunate, I'm, 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 to be honest. The M210 screws are protruding a little bit out 
off the back. I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Um, if we would put it down now, I'm afraid it could scratch. It could scratch the surface. I'm not sure. Let's let's do the second one in the corner. Probably we need shorter screws for that. Um, for that, at least for this version, taping it. To t uh, I don't have shorter ones here. If I'm not wrong, I'm, I can check it out. Might have a few shorter screws. But let's let's make it at least so much fixed that it's not moving. How much is it protruding? We can also we can also just cut it off. Let I me mean, just cut it a little bit here. The, the screws are a little protruding here. Just I think one millimeter. Probably have to check if it's scratching now. Is it? I guess not. Yeah, it is scratching. That's unfortunate. So the M2 by 10 screws are too long for for this way of mounting stuff. Probably have to cut them a little bit, or we find shorter screws. I'm not sure if I have. Uh, maybe let me let me see. We ha could have luck. Uh, we could be lucky in terms of big tree tech packaging some screws in. I don't know. No, no, no. Seems not. Oh, they have, but they are I'm not sure. If this works. It's different screws. It's uh, um, yeah. They're too thick. I I could have. Let's see, I, I think I know what I do. We could use different screws. The only thing is probably the holes are, you know, they even have to extend them a bit. I have M2 screws here. So we're not going to use the self-tapping screws. We're going to use normal M2 screws, but uh, I'm going to use shorter, shorter versions. So we have M2 by Glor. Then we can take very much the shortest that we find. So let's try. This this is already good enough. M2 by what is it? Six millimeters. Let's try that. M2 by six. It could could be just the right length. And we need a smaller screwdriver. I think is this even smaller. Yes. This is uh, where is it? I had it here. 1.5. Come on. Not even smaller. I think this this should be good. I think it's even smaller. Smaller head, even smaller. Uh, then we actually need to find a smaller screwdriver. I'm not sure if this one works. This is hex 1.3. That's maybe the wrong. We don't need hex. What is it? THX. Uh, let me see, 1.5. Next one, this could be the one that we're looking for. Let's see. 
That looks great. Looks much better. Exactly what we need. Six millimeter M2. That's just the right length. Diameter is also perfect. So, let's mount this. Finally. Oh, come on, this, uh, this, these are fresh, they're not magnetized yet. It's a little unfortunate. Are we getting in? Yes. Don't want to overdo that because they are not flat head. I think they're sunken head, so we don't want to push them too hard. Because that's going to break the PCB otherwise. It's just as no enough that it's touching the PCB, it's holding it, but not, not too much force. Good. Last one here. Network video recorder. I see. Keep fit weeks. Maybe it's to help you get fit and are you not charging you? <laughs> so you don't need to use the works, Jim. <laughs> so Tutum Garmin is running and running for work and it's gonna be the fittest person in the room when we someday meet. <laughs> we should definitely come together at some point, meet each other. Question is when and where we do that. <laughs> so it will be a gym. Oh my goodness. That's coincidental. Okay, so we're doing the last three. And we should be good. Oh, stream keeps pausing. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, maybe just for a couple of seconds. Stream buffering, it's zero o'clock again. Let me see. Let me double check for you. Okay. Um, let me take action. I'm gonna just quickly... Um, HTTPS. Gonna fix that in a second. Okay. Why? What is happening? Can you still hear me? And oh, now my chat window is done. Why is it why is it stopped working? Come on.
Okay, so I'm trying to fix the internet connection. Um, hope you can still hear and see me, um, that we're not losing the stream completely. So that's gonna take a minute or so. Um, I think I know where I have to look. Um, last time we had a similar issue and I had some jobs that were basically running at zero o'clock, but honestly, I had this job already started in the evening before we actually started the stream and it should not, there shouldn't be anything huge happening in it anymore, but could be that another job started and is now blocking the internet. So let me see if that's, yeah, we have 100% internet load. What is going on? So let me quickly, what is happening? So let's see. Let me see if that's, that's gonna be fixed. So if I can fix it in a couple of seconds or not. What is happening? What is happening? Come on, launch this tool. Okay, is there any job running right now? Rules. Okay, so the stream is back up. You know what happened? If you can hear me now, you know what happened? Uh, OBS was the OBS just flipped out and OBS started to stream at maximum bitrate at zero o'clock. So I streamed until like until zero o'clock. The stream was limited to six thousand kilobits, and that's what it's supposed to be because Twitch doesn't support more. And uh, at zero o'clock, Twitch or uh, OBS just used all bandwidth. For no reason, switch to using 100% internet. No restriction anymore. Of going full, full bandwidth and ignoring all of the uh, bandwidth settings. That must be a that must be a bug. <laughs> That's clearly a bug. I mean, honestly, it can't be right. It cannot be that that Twitch just uh, that OBS just does this without without any reason but that was the same cause last time honestly we did had the same issue last time we streamed when it was zero o'clock suddenly it was starting to uh stuttering and that was the same reason and now i just hit shortly hit the stop streaming button hit the start streaming button and it was fixed okay let's get back to let's get back to this we have Raspberry Pi and hey, CyberQkish, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Thanks for following. Appreciate that. Appreciate you. So I will now fix my Raspberry Pi here into a convenient position. Yes. Yeah, closer to... I mean, not too far from the center, but also not too close. Let's have that as a comparison here. So we have a little bit of space here between these two units. Um, let's have it sitting like that. So we still, I think we have good distance here from, for the USB port. We can still plug in the cables conveniently, also network. Um, I think from here, we, we don't have an issue from that perspective. This here, I mean, we cannot move it further. Uh, we can also have it a little bit misaligned. I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't have a problem with that. We can, I think we can still plug in cables if we have this, the BTD Pi like that. Uh, so I would, I would just place them side by side like this and we can still reach the ports. So let's also glue that, remove the tape here. Um, Let's see, can we, can we have it like that? And yeah, I think it's 
Ah. Ah, it's maybe a little too close, a little too close to the motor. I mean, let's move it over a tiny bit. A uh, bit further away. Just like that. We can still reach this port here. So, looks good. Both PCBs are fixed. I mean, you still pull it off, but it's, it's okay. It's working. That's the electronics part. As far as we can see it for tonight. I don't know if there is more to do in this step. Let me figure out what's the next step. So we have, uh, we have done a couple of things tonight. We did mount this panel. Uh, we didn't do any wiring exactly for the tool head, but we did the panel. We did, um, we did as aligned these mounting plates for our Raspberry Pi and the big tree tech Pi on that panel. We did not yet do the heat set intros for the fan. Uh, we have to do that still. And then we uh, mounted the both boards to the back panel. We mounted the electronics. That's another part. That's another manual. That's this here. Um, we did this section here where we connected all of the power. <sighs> then we got SGR Pico preparation. I think that's software stuff. That's a completely different story. Uh, we have the power supply. We should now, I think we should mount the cooling fan. So we have the last, we have that step done. We have all of the steps done. I'm gonna do a last threaded insert section. Heat set camera. Let's do, let's do this. Heat set inserts for this part here. So you can count on OBS to completely go crazy at midnight. That's what we learned tonight. Massive airflow for your PC, that's awesome. You wanna see my you wanna see my gaming PC rig and the airflow at some point? So maybe we should maybe we should show that at some point. Can make a little tour of that. Okay, so heating up. Um, let's Come down a bit. Okay, so. We're doing four inserts in this part. Two. And the last one goes in, switch off. Okay, so we have that little, let's have the cables under the printer for a second. This is a mount for a fan. 
Mm. I'm wondering, uh, I think you have a second part for that. It's actually a counter piece at holding it. Where is it? I'm forgetting about it. I forget about this. This is the part. Uh, here we have it. This is the counter element. That should hold this onto the frame. How is it working? Um, it's somewhere explained here. So, where is this supposed to go? It's supposed to cool, I think it's supposed to cool the Raspberry Pi. So it should be aligned with the Raspberry Pi's direction, I guess. Okay, so let's find out uh, what we need. We need, we need to hold that, we need to put this in the extrusion. Weird enough, it is. How's the line? I'm, I'm a little confused where I'm uh, looking at at the moment. This is uh, it's from the top, is it? It's facing towards. Like this. Okay, I need to understand how where this is facing. Um, so I wanna I wanna understand how this is working. So let me see. This is sometimes a little confusing in which direction we are looking. Okay, now I think I understand it better. Um, so we're looking here. This is where this is where it's supposed to be. Here is our Raspberry Pi. Probably want to put it centered, so we have some airflow going in that direction. And I think it's just pushed, pushed and pressed into this extrusion. That's the way how it's fixed. Okay, so we push that in, and the second piece is going coming on top from here. That is going to be the fan position. Yeah, it's not precise. M3 by 12. Okay, M3 by 12 screws should be holding this thing in place, and M3 by 16 are holding the fan. Where is it blowing? Blowing towards the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So let's fix this first. Mount this thing in place. Are we hitting this part correctly? Okay, it's working. So that fan mount is fixed to the frame and now we are missing the little blower fan. I saw that. This is it. It's yeah well, how is it working? It's just sitting here. Cable is probably going somewhere to the side. Not sure where we can connect this cable. We're we gonna connect this to the Raspberry Pi or what's the idea? Probably yes, probably we want to have it running uh, somewhere here. Now we need another screw that would be um, M3 by 16. Let's find them. Um, so we have this little blower fan. It will push air from this side towards the Raspberry Pi. And it's just attached to this little mount here. I guess still if we want to push USB cables in into the Raspberry Pi's ports, well maybe we have to remove the fan 
for that temporarily or we have enough space. I don't exactly know how much we need to plug cables in, but that's how it looks like now. We have this little blower fan sitting here, flush basically, that's blowing in this direction. And then we're gonna have some, then we will definitely have some cooling uh, blocks here on the Raspberry Pi, so it's pushing air in here. That's, that's that step. That is done. Um, and now we are, right, that's, that's something that's on the other manual. This is already done. We have already connected the, uh, this, is, this is definitely a different step now. The question is where are we leaving that manual again? So we have page 203 and to, to 206 where we are spending uh, three to six, three to six. Controller board, controller fan. I have no idea if we can, where we're gonna plug in the controller fan. We're gonna figure out later, I guess. Because, or we have it here. Preparing the pick I think. Yeah, that's a different Raspberry Pi, of course. And it, this looks different because it's a different, um, it's a different mainboard. I think here we can now guess a little bit better how we are running the cables. Just have to do it in a clean way. And then we, we have another, yeah, we have a rest of cable chain that we can run in the middle. <laughs> if we have enough space. Good that we know it now, since we already attached the Raspberry Pi. Now we know, God's sake, we know that we have a cable, cable channel running in the middle of the printer. If I'm not mistaken, um, yes, okay, so might be, might be that we have to move stuff, I don't know, maybe not, I think we can, we can keep it like this, we can probably keep it like this, um, from this side here we don't need something, we don't need to attach stuff, um, we have, I mean we can get quite close, Honestly, we can keep it very close to the Raspberry Pi, but we can uh, we could also move the Pi a little bit away. Uh, here we need some space so we can plug the cables. That should still work. That should still work. We don't have to plug in anything in the Raspberry Pi on that side. Yeah, I'm not planning to do any anything here. Um, actually, the only thing I need is the USB ports. All the ports, are, all the other ports are going elsewhere, anyways. Yeah, so here we should be able to push the push the plugs if we just keep this channel uh, very close to the Pi. We should, we should good. We should be good. So let's let's do that now. I think it makes sense. So, chat is, uh, why is the Restream chat not working in my browser window here? What is this happening? View. Um, chat, why are you not showing? What's happening? Looking nice, yeah? Okay. So far I'm happy how it looks. I think the wiring, we should do the, we should keep a reasonable amount of time with the wiring, honestly, because that's what's gonna make or break stuff, if I'm honest. 
So we should we should really spend enough time on this. That's why I wasn't completely sure how far we would get tonight. Um, still, I still can go further. I still have tonight. We have plenty of time, honestly. Until I'm really getting tired. I'm not tired yet, so um, we just kept going a little longer. Ah, come on, what's going on? So. This is how we do it. I will just place it like this, centered and quite close to the Raspberry Pi. Is it vertical? Yeah. I think it's good enough, if you ask me. It's good enough. Good enough is the, the right term. Can we take that off, please? So. Good enough. Okay, so that channel, that looks fine. We can run our cables from top to down. We can run it up and down and up and down. As, as much as we like it. So honestly, I, uh, we can also do a lot of stuff now uh, freestyle. Connecting stuff. Um, we're gonna take a last look here at the wiring guide. I'm just wanna be sure that I'll do the right thing. So let's go up again, see what we did so far. We had checkpoint one, finishing off. We did this below deck wiring and now we are wiring the back panel, preparing the Pico. I think the software stuff, this is something I need to basically double check. Preparing the pico bilical. This is this is a this is a hat that we're not using because we're not using the um, the Raspberry Pi 2W. We're using uh, the Raspberry Pi the normal version, and this is the this is the this is the board that we now need to prepare. The pico bilical pain PCB is a Raspberry Pi 2040. Another Raspberry Pi 2040. It should be pre-flashed with Clipper firmware. If your pickable was not flashed or needs to be reflashed, click here. Um, so we assume that this is done. Install the fan voltage jumpers corresponding to the rated voltage of your hot end and parts fans. The hot end fan is set to 5 volt while the part fan is set to 24 volt. These kits come with a 24 volt hot end fan. So set the hot end fan to 24 volts. Please double check the sticker on the fan to make sure you have a 24 volt fan. Otherwise it will damage the fan. Where do I put this? Uh, how do I do this? Should I put this uh, uh, thing on or not? Mm. I don't know. What does what does it actually mean? So let me see. I want to ah. Uh, the guide. I want to understand what this jumper does. Does it mean it's if I put something on there, it's going to be 24 volts or is it going to be 5 volts? Is this documented somewhere? In the photo below, the hot end fan is set to 5 volt. Okay, that means so ah, this is this is here yeah, these jumpers. This is totally misleading, my friends. It's th th something red marked, but we are actually looking up here on the right corner. Oh, friends, what are you doing? I mean, honestly, 
This is this is so confusing. Look at this. We are looking at this part like it's in the, in this picture, but we are actually interested to we are interested in these two jumpers. We're not interested in this jumper here. Right? It's marked red in this picture. <laughs> it's not the thing that we're interested in. We're interested in this up here. That's completely wrong. That's completely misleading, my friends. Oh my goodness. So we're setting everything to 24 volts. We're setting 24 volts for part cooling fan and hot end fan. And I'm double checking the voltages for sure. So we have the right voltage set. Can I still check this? Okay, this is the same fan. This is the same fan. Is it 24 volt? Yes. Okay, so all of these fans are 24 volt, obviously. We can, so we can leave it on 24. Note two pin header circled in red. It should not be populated with a jumper unless you need to flash the board. Yeah, but you should not mention uh, the voltage fans and then mark something red in this picture. It's completely confusing. Okay, PCB placement, we decided that, we decided the placement. The connections are, we can start connecting cables now. We can connect the bed heater and 24 volt input voltage. So let's turn this around. Okay, we start connecting stuff. We have a 24 volt input. Um, we probably want this to come out here want to have it let me bring this a little bit further and a little bit zoomed out so what we want is we want 24 volt connected to this board how do we figure which is plus and minus just double checking this is somewhere nothing is written here Oh, this is always great. There's no visual, nothing in, nothing is really showing us the, the polarity. So we have to find out using the, I don't know, does Big Trick Tech deliver anything instructional? No, they have to, don't do anything. So we have to, I don't, I don't wanna trust this, honestly. Uh, BTT, Pico. YQ, where is it? Is there a wiring guide somewhere? Are you kidding me? That's the official homepage for the Big Tree Tech SKR Pico, and it doesn't even tell us the polarity of these input terminals. You must be kidding me. I mean, quit guess from these, I don't know what's round and square. Uh, but why is there no marking, nothing written? Why is this not, this is not really obvious? Why is, it, why is it so hidden? Can we not be... Oh my goodness. I mean, this is, this is crazy. BTD power pin out. Why is it not explained? Is this Warren documentation? Okay, this is a little bit better. We have, so here it says uh, we have plus on the first pin, minus on the second pin. Let's see if that is identical to here. Plus on the first and then we have negative, okay. Okay, at least these are, well, that's, that's, that's something we can close, I guess. Let's see. So we have at least the same 
on both drawings. Okay, okay. So let's believe that. I'm I tend to believe it. Okay, yeah. Uh, not happy. Not happy that there is nothing on this board telling us exactly. Okay, this is plus. This is minus. But there is also not enough space. Obviously, it's very small. Everything is crammed like crazy. So already these connectors are quite thick. <sighs> these are very thick pins and it's not easy. It's not easy to get them in. Let me see my lamp just stopped working. So, okay, let's try this again. This little terminal is, I'm opening this up as much as I can, but these, these cables, these wires are so thick, it's already difficult to get them into the terminals. Terminal is actually not big enough. Oh my goodness. It's just a design flaw. They have, I mean, they have these nice cable ends, obviously, but they are so thick already. It's not, yeah, it's okay. Working now. But we have to hold these terminals. That's something you should, you should not tighten these screws without holding the terminal, otherwise you might actually destroy it or remove it from the board or detach it from the board. Come on! I want to do this carefully, I don't want to destroy anything. So let's push in the connector. Carefully tighten the connections, hold the terminal. So we're not rip, ripping it off. Now, one thing, of course I want to do some cable management. The question is where do I put this cable now? I could, I could have it in the channel that's under the printer. We can hide. I think we can store the cable there. Just make a loop back and forth a little bit. So we have that stored away. Okay, so that's fairly clean now. That is power for the Pico. Now we have the, there's my bad, 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 bad heater cable. Bad heater cable. Here we go. Ah, oh, come on. I did this tape for running the cable through. Uh, through the chain, now I have a hard time getting that off. It's, it's not funny. Let me, please, remove it. Do we need to cut it? Come on. Okay. Okay, this is the bad, bad, bad heater, not bad, bad heater cable. It's two pins, and this is the terminal for it. Still, we want to decide now how we want to do the wiring and the cables. I think we're going to still do the channel and can go through the channel and up here. I think that's clean. That's quite clean. OK, 
Can we get them in here? Still need to open up a bit more. Yes. These are also very thick pins that they used. So you have to be going straight and they're also, in my opinion, a little bit too long. They're sticking out quite probably half a millimeter or something, or maybe even a, a whole millimeter. Sticking out from these terminals. But now, see, if we have a uh, bad heater cable, also have that running. Oh, that was my light. Uh, we go into the channel. We have this loop already for the power cable, but we can store stuff in the channel quite clean and run the cables so nothing is interfering with anything. So, aperture slides obviously work still. It's quite stable. Good. What next? Thermistor and RGB. Yeah, that's the big question. We did never clarify the RGB wiring. That thermistor is here. Yes, that's rather simple because it's only two pins. And we have a little connector that we probably have, we did have to attach or we have to attach now. A two pin connector that's missing on this cable because we had to run it through a cable chain. So we had to have a, a very small connector. So where's the, the connector? Where's this plastic piece here? That's it. That's what we're missing, a little two pin Connector. So how do we do a clean cable organization? We can, I think we can run it like this in the channel and then go to this, this, and this is just enough. Nothing, that's not too comfortable since there's not much space, but probably it will be of Okay, we're we going to push this in. Here we don't have any polarity concerns. Just, just need to make sure that the cable is long enough. I hope this is the last connector. Double checking, is there anything written here? Again. T THB, yeah, thermistor for bed. Okay, that's good. That's the most, the last connector here. Again, it's very, very th tight corners here. Good, cable is in and it's just enough, just enough cable. <laughs> there's, there's really no no more centimeter to be to be used here okay so we have thermistor cable in what's missing uh, the bed R RGB that's it's this one here the problem with that is I don't know the like what are these pins doing something written on it is it Oh my goodness, this is so small. It says a super tiny, thin shrink wrap around this cable. Impossible to read without glasses. Well, this is just a description of that, of that shrink wrap troop, that the brand of the tube. Okay, so let's... Let's figure out what what are the pins supposed to do. Hope this is somewhere in the description of 
We have to jump here, I guess, to the Kirigami bed. Um, I'm not sure if it has any description of the PCB board for the RGB front LED panel. Is there any description? Why is my screen blacking? What's happening? Why is the screen going black? Oh, it's switching off. Okay, my screen just switched off. Why? Screen going to sleep. Okay, nothing serious happening here. There's nothing happening here. <laughs> Square hole in the terminal. Ferrules are crimped square. They fit only one way. Yeah, it's probably printed on the underside. It's I, I, I agree, but it's unfortunate. Okay. Mm. There's a huge delay on restream. I'm not sure how many seconds. Um, are we live? Yeah. So what next is I need to figure out two things, two things. First of all, I want to know from the Pico board, um, what are the pins for our NeoPixel? What are the pins actually doing? NeoPixel signal, that's, that's great. We have a NeoPixel signal port that is close to, um, the edge of the board is somewhere, this is here. However, NeoPixel, <sighs> I'm not sure what the, uh, the colors actually mean from these cables. I need to research, uh, let me see, um, rum, rum, Voron, V0, NeoPixel, <sighs> Kirigami, um, BTT Pico. So let's see if we have find something, anything. Um, okay, okay, okay. Is there anything about the Kirigami LED front? LED front. Is this the thing? I'm not sure. New pixel LED. The problem is how are these Kirigami installation guide? I think this is what we used. Is it? Here's the cable. Ah, here. This is the cable. The ki so maybe we find something about the why here we go install the connector housing for the neo pixel connector the red cable is five volt the white cable is data and black is ground if you're using an skr mini e3 or skr pico as the main word you can refer to the following photo to install the housing okay we searched we found we won Okay, so let's, let's see. First, first of all, uh, we have uh, the red one, the white one. Okay. And last is the black. So, referring to this image, we should be good. And this is the connector. So um, that cable is rather long. The question is, where do we store it? Um, I think we can put part of it into this where we first connect it. And then we can put it, store it here. So we're going to run it in the channel, down. And store the rest in the channel under the printer. Okay. 
Can we? Give me that, please. So, is that working? Hope so. At least the cable is now stored. I'm not sure if it's gonna stay in there. Hopefully. Push it a little bit. Let's see. I mean, this is maybe not final, final yet. At least it's out of the way, and we can we can now we can later find either we find a better place where to store it, or we. I mean, this is not too bad here actually. Then we have another power cable. Let's not forget about that. That's going all the way up. All the way up to the Picobilical PCB board. So let's also run that maybe as, as the lowest or the first cable action, which is going under everything. This is going to be power supply for the Picobilical PCB. It's also quite long, so maybe we need to store that some or we can just make a loop here in this channel maybe that's the best for later at least so the neopixel cable is in hopefully going to stay in now what what next um What next? I think we can uh, get back to the LDO manual. So, yeah, I think that's more or less how it looks for us at the moment. We already have a few more cables in there, but yeah, that's all the that's all for it that we did. Now we can con continue with the stepper cables. Um, Z stepper cable. Let's let's maybe do the lower cable. That's the Z stepper. That's going to be running around here. And where is the plug for that? It's already this one. Sure, is this the Z or the Z? Z. Z, Z, Z1, Z1, Z1. How do you how do you say that actually? Z or Z? I think it's Z, right? Z is the if I'm not wrong, it should be called Z stepper. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great, great. Can you still uh, by the way, I'm I'm double checking. Everyone's still here? You're not sleeping yet? Still doing cabling? Or are, you, are you already sleeping, my friends? Are you sleeping already? Why am I not? Why is it not stable? What's going on? Why is the connection not stable? If you're streaming with stable, with streaming with good quality, I guess. What is going on? Still watching, to the Carmen. Great. My problem is that I, yeah, yeah. So it's quite delayed. Everything is quite delayed here if I'm watching my own stream. So let's see, we were here. So Z-Stepper, I have connected that. It's a pretty short cable and with the end stop switch, this is, this is already, um, uh, this is also missing the little connector. You have to do that. That's also easy because it's just a two pin connector. Nothing to be worried about. Oh, it's a three pin connector. Okay. Well, where does it have to be uh, then? I think it's always the outer two pins, if I'm not mistaken. Is it? Uh, oh, let's try. Figure that out. Can we see that? Is this is it possible to zoom this? 
Hmm. Oh, it's actually not. It's middle pin and upper pin. Okay. I mean, changing that is not super difficult, but yeah, we should. Oh my goodness. We should make it so it is correct from the start, hopefully. So we have that stepper and end stop for that that we're doing here. Okay, the end stop goes first connector. Is that actually written there? Yeah, that's that's written here. This cable is going straight up here into this plug. Now we are seeing whether we can do this. Is it too close? I think it's still working fine. Yeah, we should still connecting, still can connect stuff. Okay, let's store that cable here as well. Z end stop. Great. What else? A stepper, B stepper. Okay, B stepper is this one. A stepper is this one. A stepper is... Um, a stepper is the lower, okay, so let's do that first, let's go across here, and in the A stepper plug, good, the cable is a little too long, can we can we just keep it in the channel a little bit? Can we store it there? So a little more elegant at least. Okay. It's not the most beautiful thing. So let's let's do the same for the B motor. We run it in here. Let's let's connect it and figure out how we store the cable. Okay, connecting the B motor so let's run it across let's go in the channel and so it's at least not going anywhere good a and b motor cable connected mm. now now we are installing the, the pick umbilical and the power 24 volt in. I think the PCB itself is still not mounted yet, right? It's not it's not really with the cables pre-attached, install the pick umbilical frame PCB where the acrylic motor panel usually goes. Don't forget to print and install the PCB cover plate. Okay, so let me just see where this would go. So we have a place here. No. I want to keep the cable out of the way. We have a place here where we can see there is a couple of threaded inserts and we can place it right here so this is going to be mounted against uh, the A and B motors uh, is there any hole in here or is it just one screw I think they are 